Welcome to the Expositor Podcast with Dr. Stephen J. Lawson. Dr. Lawson is the founder and president of One Passion Ministries. The Expositor Podcast is focused on taking your preaching to the next level. Now, here's Dr. Lawson. I want to talk to you in this passage about how to make observations of the text grammatically. Now, let me begin by making a confession. When, when I was in high school, I remember I took accelerated English and other English classes, and I just really didn't want to have anything to do with English grammar. I just wanted to play football, baseball, basketball, run track. And I really was kind of left behind. The other students were so smart, and I, as my father told me, was, but I just didn't want to apply myself, which was true. Um, And when I went to college, uh, I was a finance major, and so I I never really took English classes. Grammar never became important to me until the time God called me to preach. And when God called me to preach, it was like a switch was flicked inside inside of me, and I suddenly became obsessed with the details in a particular passage of Scripture. And in order for me to interpret a passage correctly, I had to make very astute observations of that passage. Well, this brought me back to the world of, 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 of grammar, something that I just loathed when I was a high school student, something I gave no attention to when I was in college. But now that I'm a preacher of the Word of God, uh, I have to understand grammar. And I remember when I went to seminary and took Greek and took Hebrew, I learned more grammar by taking Greek and Hebrew than I ever learned in my English classes, but that was because I'm now motivated. Well, as we think about, um, as we think about grammar, Uh, Let me just set before you seven key words that are a part of understanding a passage of Scripture grammatically, and you need to have a key eye for this. The first is the verbs. Um, The action is always in the verbs. And as you look at a passage, look for the verbs, and you need to learn how to parse those verbs. Uh, You need to know the tense the voice, the mood, and the person of those verbs. And you may be thinking, oh, wow, that's just way too much detail for me. Well, you need to know because the Bible is written with much precision. I just want to remind us that even Jesus said, every jot and every tittle a Scripture will be fulfilled. Down, that means down to the most minute detail. And so with verb tense, you need to know is it present tense, past tense, future tense, aorist tense, what, whatever, perfect, imperfect. Uh, the voice, is it active? Is it passive? Is it middle or reflexive? Uh, the mood, is it indicative, interrogative? Is it imperative? Is it um, exclamatory? And then the person, is it singular or plural? I'm just setting before you some key observations that you're going to have to make as you are looking at a passage. And then the subject. Uh, The subject is the one who's doing the action. Jesus wept. Wept is the verb, obviously, um, but Jesus is the subject. He's the one who is doing the weeping. And then the object. That is the one being acted upon. Um, to use this example, I hit the ball. I is the subject, hit is the verb, the ball is the object of the action of the verb. And so as you're looking at a passage of Scripture, you have to have very keen powers uh, of observation. And then under that, uh, the fourth word would be modifiers. Uh, In most sentences, there are adjectives and there are adverbs that modify nouns and verbs. And so as I began to study the Bible, I I had to begin to have uh, a keen eye. Modifiers describe uh, the words that they are modifying. 
Uh, adjectives describe nouns and adverbs describe verbs and nouns. That's just very basic. And as you look at a passage, um, you need to see what is modifying what. And then there are prepositions and prepositional phrases. Um, in the beginning, that's a prepositional phrase. God, the subject, created the verb the heavens and the earth, that's the object. And so in the beginning modifies when God created the heavens and the earth. Um, so you have to have a keen eye for prepositional phrases. And these little small words like in, I in, or by, or for, or through, or... Um, uh, others would be upon or, for example, the solace. The, the, you've been saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, for the glory of God alone. Those little prepositions, by, uh, through, in, and for. In passages of Scripture, they are loaded with, with meaning that you need to... To, to see as you're looking at a passage of Scripture. And then six, conjunctions. Um, the two most important would be and and but. And those are critically important words. Uh, but signifies a sharp contrast with what preceded. And the but now goes in an antithetical direction. Um, the, the conjunction and groups things together, usually of similar meaning. And so always looking for conjunctions. And, um, and then also the adverb therefore often functions as a, as a, um, a, a, as a conjunction. And great preaching gets to the therefore. Great passages of Scripture often have therefore in it. Romans 12, verse 1. Um, has the therefore. Um, so, finally, um, articles, definite article V, indefinite article A, that's how much you need to be observing what's in a particular passage of Scripture. And I want to urge you to even refamiliarize yourself with some of these basics about grammar, especially as you're preaching epistles, especially as you're preaching um, Hebrew poetry, these little details uh, are often major keys that unlock the meaning of a passage of Scripture. So uh, I want to encourage you to refresh your understanding of, of grammar. And you can often find at the back of some dictionaries, like my Oxford English Dictionary, just a summary of grammar. And ever so often to just flip through that and to remind yourself of grammar. Uh, it'd be very important in your interpretation of a passage of Scripture. Well, may the Lord give you uh, the understanding that you need to work grammatically in making observations of the text.